Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the next episode in the Jessie's Journey series where I take you guys through what I do when producing a young horse. So if you've seen the last episode, you'll know that we were having some trouble with our saddle, to say the least. Um, we did get it sorted. We had our saddle come out and check one and actually they fitted her to the Albion K3. But she's changed shape even more now and it's just not working again. It works for a set amount of time and then I just find that it goes up her neck again. As soon as we start cantering, jumping, anything that means she's using her shoulders a bit more, I just end up on her neck. So I messaged Albion who I'm very kindly sponsored by. They're one of my long-term sponsors. And I was like, look guys, I'm having some real trouble. Could we get you guys out to have a look and see if we can find a solution? They very kindly have sent out one of their saddlers, Sophie. She's coming out today, she should be here any minute. And we're gonna have a look at the saddle today, see if we can fit a better saddle to Jess, one that actually fits her with all the movements um, when we're cantering and jumping. And hopefully we'll have a solution. Um, it's a bit of a tricky process fitting a saddle to a horse. We'll talk to Sophie and we'll figure it out today, hopefully at least get some sort of plan on how to move forward with it because the saddle she's in currently, the K3, it works. I can school in it, I can hack in it. I just can't do much jumping. I can't really do much cantering, which obviously isn't ideal when trying to produce a young horse. But obviously when you're producing a young horse, you want everything to be as comfortable for them as possible because you're trying to make it a good experience for them. You don't want it to be any pain, any niggles, anything that's just causing work to be not an enjoyable experience. I'm gonna get her ready now and when Sophie's here I will introduce you guys to her. Okay so as I mentioned here's Sophie, she's just arrived. Hello. Um, Sophie yeah do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so I am Albion Saddle Fitter so I'm here on behalf of Albion. We're gonna have a little look at Jess today <laughs> um, because obviously she's a growing baby. Um, yeah and yeah. let's uh, we'll have a little look. So how long have you been fitting saddles for? Um, so I've been a saddle fitter for over 10 years now, <laughs> so including my apprenticeship and then obviously qualifying, um, and then we're here now, really. Yeah, so definitely knows what she's doing. <laughs> so hopefully we can find a solution today because as I mentioned, we do need to get this <laughs> sorted. Um, so let's have a look. I think so we're gonna start by looking at what she's currently in, right? And yeah, what's so we'll do um, a little bit about Jess, because it's the first time I've met her. We'll take some templates of her back um, we'll look at her current saddle, which she's using, um, and any alterations we can do, we'll do them. If not, we'll start looking at a couple of other saddles on her and then make a decision on what we actually need to do going forward. Perfect, so let's get started. <laughs> so before we put any saddles on, Sophie had a quick look at Jess and made sure that everything was nice and comfortable for her. She didn't have any sore patches, she could lift her back well, and that just made sure there wasn't any underlying issues. Quite nice for her back, to be fair to her. She just tied her further back. Anything mm -hmm. I'd really be worrying about. So, what makes a horse difficult to fit a saddle to? Like, quite, what kind of shapes? You've scale? got <laughs> quite a few things that can be challenging. So, if you've got a particularly short back horse, mm -hmm. um, so fitting the combination of horse and rider. So, you tend to find recently a lot of horses have been bred more and more short backs because they want them obviously stronger through the back and not weak. Mm -hmm. um, you now probably find you get a couple more cases of like your kissing spine and things um, because obviously we're breeding these really really short backed horses mm -hmm. whereas before you used to find that you'd have a lot of kind of more lumbar problems because they'd be a lot longer in the back um, so that can be a, a, a problem you've got a little bit more of an issue when you've got a full girth groove so when your scapula ends back here and your girth groove sits actually in front so and then you can see she's actually well sprung in the rib cage here so then they're kind of a little bit pear shaped where they're narrow at the chest and the front and then they're a little bit well sprung in the rib cage mm. behind um, if you've got completely flat no withers mm. um, that can cause a fitting problem so you've got kind of nothing to keep the saddle back off the shoulder um, and those type of horses we tend to roll a saddle as well okay creep high so very creep high mm -hmm. very downhill again everything wants to kind of jam in behind the shoulder mm -hmm. so they can become quite sore around the shoulder and around the base of the wither mm -hmm. um, and again keeping them the saddle balanced and then not tipping the rider forward with that sort of shape really gets increasingly difficult okay um but they would probably be your your most obvious mm -hmm. uh, and then you come into kind of more injury related fitting issues okay so if a horse has had a lot of time off say due to a, a tendon injury or something they've been loading onto the opposite kind of leg mm -hmm. um, or sit in the box for a while um, then you tend to find they'll go quite asymmetric okay. so again they can really throw a saddle to off to one side mm. um, until you get that level push um, that's obviously when we'll get a very nice level saddle yeah. but inevitably you're putting hopefully a level object on something that isn't mm. so you're going to get that slip okay. so 
that can also be a fitting issue um yeah so with her mainly it's the forward girth groove yeah so when you're looking her at the moment the moment we'll do another belly lift and you can actually park you'll see a little bit easier so you see how much she comes up that's in theory her working back okay um you can see where she kind of has this kind of dip in here and then she goes very full um she's quite full over here as well and then that wither shape completely near enough disappears yeah <laughs> so then you've got that forward girth groove and you're a little bit creep high as i say everything is asking the saddle to kind of run forward okay. so that's a little bit of what's going on with her so given her age as well what we would have hoped is that she would have kind of grown a little bit more mm. is it going to happen we don't know <laughs> so we kind of have to just fit very much in the present yeah. hope that she gets stronger hope she potentially has a little bit of a, a growth hopefully fingers yeah. crossed yes <laughs> um and then that will obviously make our life a lot easier to fit the saddle to yes but if we can't there's various other things that we can do so we could do point straps sometimes so they sit directly off the point and they kind of help anchor behind the shoulder mm -hmm. um that will also bring the girthing when you actually position your girth forward mm -hmm. so again if you were girthing here you'll kind of get that whereas if you're kind of girthing here it's then in line mm -hmm. as you mentioned before you can get an ergonomically shaped girth or mm -hmm. kind of cut back behind here what they actually do is free up behind the back of the elbow and again prevent that girth running forward into okay. mm -hmm. You've got other things such as anti-slips. I don't tend to use them as often unless I very much have to, okay. um, purely because you kind of get that issue that mm. you're gripping with a pad and then it can't allow. So you can end up with a little bit of a sore horse depending okay. on how yeah. sensitively skinned they are. Right. Um, and then it goes into kind of fashions <laughs> and all sorts of problems. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's quite quite a few things we can, we can well, kind of talk options, about. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's a lot of options we can do for her. But yeah, the main the main thing we need to do here is actually work out true shape wise what's going to work for her. Um, actually, panel wise, because when you've got a horse like this, you tend to find actually the closer you can fit, and then the saddle will actually stabilise. So when okay. you're kind of sitting off the back a little bit, so the panel is a bit too much, again that can help in, in the saddle running forward. Mm. So sometimes you have to kind of fit with less gusset um, and sit the saddle closer. <laughs> She's having a good old listen. She says, you're talking about me. Um, so yeah, we'll um, do our templates and then we'll see. Oh, exciting, Jess. Yeah. So with a short look, Sophie has very quickly figured out the root of the problem. Jess has quite a forward cut girth groove and is a little croup high. And combining this with a rather wide rib cage, and particularly when she's working, her withers kind of disappear. It means everything is pushing that saddle forward, which explains why I end up on her neck. So the next plan of action was to create a template. I'll let Sophie explain here what that means and how she's doing it. You've got left side, right side. So near side, off side. Um, this is obviously the front going backwards. Yeah. So we've done a basic set of templates today. So we've taken four. So A is two inches behind the scapula. That's the first fixed point of the tree in relation to on her back. Mm -hmm. I've done it at C at the moment, but that would basically be um, two inches then behind A. Okay. Um, so again, that's where she starts to broaden over her back, um, basically the kind of the base of a wither. And then I've done it as E today, which that would be T18. So that's the last thoracic rib. So as I was saying earlier, the saddle placement area, so is basically between A and E on this particular template. We can't fit beyond that last rib because there's nothing to actually support a rider okay. so anything beyond there is all soft tissue and that's why i think so their loins yeah yes. pretty much so again if you do fit too long you can um make the horse sore um you can sit the rider slightly too far back you can increase bad behavior such as bucking and things like that as well um so we always try and obviously fit within the last rib and this one is basically her back shape and that's a in relation to where it would sit mm -hmm. um so you can see she basically rises She's not very symmetrical quickly. across that one is she no so you can literally when you have a little look from far back you can see which is a weaker side yeah um but again like you say she's naturally a little bit weaker you'd expect to see that okay and no one horse is perfectly level okay. as no one rider is so okay. it's something i wouldn't worry about but you Got probably will find that she's easier one way than another yes, to ride I do find <laughs> <laughs> so now we had all of jesse's measurements it was time to take a look at the saddle that she was currently being ridden in um, this saddle was fit to her by a different saddler but she did say it wasn't a perfect fit however as soon as sophie saw it she basically went this is completely the wrong tree shape for her and this is this is her explaining why that is <laughs> even when it's on it's a little bit downhill mm -hmm. and then again where the panel sits it's actually 
because of her shape it's almost like a little bit wider in a certain area yeah. so it kind of already just doesn't actually sit behind the shoulders so no. before you even start it's just good given that yeah. okay wrong um, tree <laughs> um yeah but again so like you say you've done a lot more work with them she's done a lot more work so after establishing that the tree was the issue, it was time to test some other saddles on Jess. So here we are having a look. This is a general purpose, and then this is a K2 jump, I believe. So here's Sophie explaining what she feels about these. So the K3, as like a standard K3 is, is no go, mm -hmm. um, unless we obviously change the tree. Um, the better panels on her are actually a K2 jump or a K2 GP. Mm -hmm. um, I'm heading more towards the GP because we've already got a point strap on. Okay. Um, none of them are perfect because these are all kind of standard fit medium mm -hmm. wide, um, which she is not standard fit. Are you? <laughs> um, so again, given her shape, we probably are going to have to do a template fit. Okay. Um, which is not a problem, it just means obviously where she flattens further back and then she narrows in the front, we just need, basically need to make sure she's got enough support. Okay. And as I was saying earlier, a lot of them have got almost a bit too much panel, um, which again is why they sit off a bit and then they're going to run forward. So okay. again with her, we'll order less front gusset. So what's a gusset? <laughs> so a stupid on, question maybe. No, but... not so on your panel, with yes. your saddle, and you kind of hopefully you'll kind of know your panel sits on yes. directly. <laughs> You've got a different depth of panel okay, if you like. So yeah. you have a front gusset and a mm. rear gusset. So that's kind of how deep or how how thick basically they are. Okay. So that's a gusset, and then that's a rear gusset. Okay. So you can see how that's a lot thinner. Can you can you flock them? Yeah. So all all Albions are all flock panels. Okay. And then you can see that's a deeper rear gusset. Mm. Right, I see. Yeah. So then it was time to actually ride in the saddles because, of course, when you ride in a saddle, it changes the weight distribution. It can really affect how it fits, and it's really important that it fits when the rider is on. So I had a trot and a canter around. This is the GP, and I actually really like this. It was really nice to ride in a saddle that wasn't so forward cut because I've been riding her in a really forward cut K3 jump saddle which obviously is not ideal for schooling. So it was nice to actually be able to get my leg down a bit and not have it so far forward. Um, she's not been in that much work because I've been traveling, which is why she isn't schooling her best, but bless her, she did try hard. And yeah, I had a trot, had a canter round. I was really liking it. I felt like I was really in balance and she was in balance. It wasn't moving about. I didn't feel like I was going up her neck even after couple of canters and then here you can see how the saddle hasn't gone forward much there's a couple of little wrinkles um sophie will explain it better than me in this next clip um, but yeah so what you get is so that that's really minimal mm -hmm. and it's just fractured so i completely agree it does but you know we had a good canter both yeah, ways yeah and that was all it did um, whereas obviously you'd normally get really kind of obvious yeah. that um and it's like say kind of a So we were really happy with how that GP was fitting, even without addressing the issue of her forward girth groove. It didn't really move forward much at all, so that was a big win. But we decided to give the jump saddle a go anyway, and I immediately felt that it was going forward. It was not as balanced. I felt it was wobbling about a bit, so I actually called it quits and decided to stop there because I knew it wasn't right for her. Okay, so as you've just seen, we've just ridden in a couple of saddles and what are our findings? So we found the K2GP actually was pretty stable. So mm -hmm. we had a tiny little bit of running forward in the canter, but really not as significant yeah, yeah. as anything else. Um, so we really tried the saddles and we cantered and cantered both reins um, to see if we could get it kind of to run forward. The good thing was we didn't really. Mm -hmm. um, we checked the back after as well and there was again minimal yeah. hair ruffles. So really good signs. So we've got, kind of got a plan of action now. Um, different tree, different type of panel. We know point strap works mm -hmm. with her and we know that she actually she felt a little bit more willing. Um, we put a different style of saddle on the jump saddle mm -hmm. and we pretty much found within the trot stop. Soon as, yeah. um, so we've got a pretty good idea and plan going forward mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. Yeah, hopefully. It's not a perfect fit, that one, was no, it? No, so the GP by no means is a perfect mm -hmm. fit. Um, we had a little bit of, like you said, a um, little bit of lift at the back and obviously that's where you felt that kind of little yeah. bit of left and right. Um, again, to do with panel and tree shape. Mm -hmm. um, 
just to again clarify these are all just kind of demo saddles standard from the factory so we haven't done any bespoking mm -hmm. anything different with the panels um it's just a case of see what works and obviously meet the horse for the first time then we can go from there really and the great thing about the albion saddles you can kind of change them to match the horse can't yeah, you yeah so we have a lot of adjustability within the range so the saddles are all adjustable firstly um we have several different tree options as well and when we have a little bit more of a difficult fit we can also <laughs> do a template fit tree um, and then we can then modify panels accordingly as well so we do have quite a lot of adjustability within the saddles and we can also specify girthing options as well so we found again with Jess point strap was very important yeah so what's the just explain for the followers what a point so strap is. the point strap is the girth shot that comes off the point of the tree um, so when you're looking at the saddle it literally sits forward and then directly off the point so what that'll do is help kind of anchor and keep the saddle behind the horse's shoulder um, you can use them for various reasons so sometimes the croup high horse mm -hmm. or one that runs a saddle forward forward girth grooves they work fantastically well mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you've got a very big moving kind of dressage oh, yeah. horse or a very big shouldered horse again they're very good at stabilizing mm -hmm. saddles yeah so thank you so much for coming out You're and helping welcome. that because i was saying at the start of the video like we wanted to make sure that everything was comfortable for her she wasn't in any pain the saddle wasn't causing any issues anything like that before we get on going the world particularly young horses it has to be a really good experience for them so saddle fitting is really important um you guys can get in contact with your local albion saddler as well if you hit them up on instagram or something they can put you in contact with them and big thank you to albion for getting sophie out and thank you sophie for coming out welcome. as well and hopefully now we can crack on a little bit with jess so yeah thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye